Hello! Happy Friday, everybody! Thank you, Derek, for that 11 months. That's amazing! I'm so excited. It's It doesn't feel like it's been that long, but apparently it has. <laughs> oh my goodness. How is that even possible? I don't even know. Uh, hello, Tyvin! First win! <laughs> yes! Meryl, you were gifted a a sub the other day during a hype train so that was really cool I'm like oh Meryl will be so excited <laughs> yay <laughs> hi all thanks for joining me today um so how long since what Derek subscribed for 11 months <laughs> 11 months so good so good so good Hey, Julie. What? I missed that. Oh, yeah. You see that cool little rainbow meeple badge next to your name? That is a subscription badge. Yay. So good. So good. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, okay. So, uh, wow. <laughs> I know. It's like, that means it's almost been a year. It's crazy. And to celebrate 11 months, Derek, we have... 1,000 followers. We hit our 1,000 follower mark. How exciting is that? Ah. It's very exciting. <laughs> Derek isn't playing marbles. He probably still is playing marbles on another screen. He's just taking a break to hang out with us for a minute. <laughs> oh, and I, I know Derek is working this weekend, so he actually might even be on the road listening. <laughs> I don't even know. Um... But yeah, I'm excited. So this past week, the past like five days, yeah, Dan was here. He was on the stream on Sunday. He was on the stream on Wednesday. That's our friend Dan. And uh, we managed to play, I think it was 67 games total. And I learned about 40 of them. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, we So I'm like... Ah, I gotta get all this stuff done. So now I have like to write about 40 games and 70 games and the blog's coming up. So I have like content that I can make for like the next couple of weeks. Uh, so you'll be seeing a lot of that in, in the next couple of weeks blog posts. Um, I think it was Shrey. Oh my God, 67. Yeah, I know. I'm a bit tired. <laughs> Ben's like... I, I require food and care, <laughs> and I'm like, games! <laughs> oh yeah, I think I think Shrey was the one that gifted Meryl, or it might have been Dr. Sign. It was one of the two. <laughs> um, Bagel Teeth, thank you for that subscription! Oh my goodness! Welcome, welcome. So happy to have you here. It makes me want some bagels. Like, I could really go for a really good bagel right now. So you're, that's what your name reminds me of, obviously. <laughs> I have all the cool emotes now. Yay! <laughs> so that's our, that emote is our little booger friend. He's so cute. Ah! <laughs> so he, we made little faces for him and all of his... Oh, his little face. <laughs> I think it's so cute. Um, so yeah, Dan was here. We got a lot of games off of the unplayed shelf. A lot of the ones I needed to review from the past year that required three or more players. A lot of games off of the shelf that just needs three players. Um, and a lot of them went right onto the sale pile. So we're clearing the shelves a little bit, piece by piece. You know, I, I'm happy to try all these games and... I'm happy to try all the games to see if I'm missing out on something. I don't want to like, it, it's it's not exactly the fear of missing out. It's just to see what's out there. I like to try all these games to see what's out there, what different mechanics are offered. So I want to try all these games that look interesting. A lot of the times they don't really hold up to being what I hope they are. So then, you know, it's good to try them and it's good to move them on to the new home. <laughs> Very cute. Yay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Michael said, Prime. 
Uh, Amazon Prime members uh, can get a free subscription if you have Amazon Prime. You get one free subscription each month to uh, support your favorite streamers on Twitch. And that's, I think, really cool. Um, I don't have Prime, but Michael has Prime, so that works. <laughs> and uh, subscribe to your favorite people. And it gives real life money to those people that you follow. And it helps. Every bit helps. Every bit helps. Um, I don't know. We should do something for the thousand followers stream. I don't know. I, I, I haven't thought of anything, but maybe we'll do a giveaway sometime in the future. <laughs> um, next week, uh, Michael and I will run down our top 10 favorite games that we learned this month. And I'm already at like 50 learned games for, for June, mostly thanks to Dan's visit. Um, so there are some good ones in there. Definitely some good ones. Um, and uh, some mediocre to not so good ones. <laughs> so, you know, as you would expect, there are a whole bunch of games. Did I hear every bit? Ah! <laughs> Thanks, Meryl. Yay! Every bit helps. <laughs> um, yeah, because I had to recently buy a new laptop and... It was quite expensive, but hopefully it will make the stream better in every sort of way. And, um, yeah, ev like I said, every bit helps. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's appreciated. So I'm wearing my, my tie-dye shirt today because I'm sitting in front of games. Uh, and when I when I wear this shirt in front of the, the rainbow wall painting, um, I just blend in. You can't even see that I'm there. It's like incognito. <laughs> so I figured, oh, I'm sitting in front of games. I can wear my rainbow shirt. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it was really fun having Dan here, and, uh, we got to play so many games, so many games that I'm really excited about, um, and, uh, yeah, but, so, it's, it's great, because I had enough content that I could write out the blog for the week while Dan was here, so I could do that pre-Dan so none of so like none of the blogs this week included Dan but the next couple weeks we'll have a whole lot of games that you know he was a part of um so if you don't know I write a blog <laughs> that's I just linked in my blog for BGG and I take all the pretty pictures and all that stuff um all the good things and um so usually on Fridays I just talk about the games that I wrote about in the blog for this past week. So I'll start off with Galaxy Trucker. Michael and I played Galaxy Trucker again, and this time with the big expansion. And it, if you're not familiar with Galaxy Trucker, it's like a real time build up your ship, try and get all the parts and everything working properly. You don't want like hanging off bits and pieces. It might get torn away by asteroids and stuff. So, um, <laughs> all these things are going to happen and your ship is likely going to get destroyed a little bit. So with the big expansion, it adds in more parts, more opportunities to have your ship fail. <laughs> it, it makes it all around more difficult, but I had a great time playing with, with that expansion. There's like a new alien that you can get. Um, I think this game is fantastic and I... I'm, I'm happy to keep playing it every so often so I can keep it in my mind on what, what pieces do what because there is a lot of content for this game and so you kind of have to work your way in. You can start using harder ships, which I'm not at a skill level to do that. I'm, I'm like one of those particular people that, you know, needs the ship to be perfect. I don't like hanging off parts, and if I get rushed or if somebody ends it before me, I'm like, oh no, what did I do? I, my ship is terrible. <laughs> but um, with two players and the expansion, you're supposed to remove like 75 tiles, and it's like you don't you don't even know what you can get uh, in that first round. You're like, what's there? I gotta find batteries. I got I gotta get cabins I get you know I gotta get engines I gotta get firearms I gotta get all these things and you're like I don't even know what's available in the pile because you mix everything together and you remove 75 and that's for the whole game so once you play the first round you can kind of get a feel of what pieces are there and what shapes you might need to fill up your your ship oh man it's crazy it's crazy 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 
But um, so much fun. So much fun. I really like that. Um, as, as you guys know that I played a bunch of solo games on the stream a while back, like two weeks ago, one week ago, I don't even know, but I got to play Pirate City of Skulls. Um, this is an adventure book game. I know that Weird Nin went out and bought one of the books and she had a great time playing that a few times because she died or she didn't do very well and then she played again. And I'm like, yep, that's basically what I died the first time through on um, Tears of a Goddess. Uh, so yeah. Hi, Dr. Sun. <laughs> um, so Pirate City of Skulls, we played it on the stream. I haven't finished it or anything, um, but I just wrote up what happened and my, my thoughts on that. But it is currently, the Adventure Book series are on Kickstarter right now with Van Ryder Games. So if you're interested in adventure book games, um, that could be a cool Kickstarter for you to check out. Another cool Kickstarter you can check out is um, Warehouse 13, <laughs> the H.G. Wells expansion, Michael. Can't do links. That's fine, Michael. That's fine. Um, but uh, yeah, Warehouse 13 currently on Kickstarter, almost at the funding mark. So if that is of interest, we did do a full playthrough on the stream when Dan was here, so that was exciting. Uh, of course, Michael was a traitor. Of course he was. <laughs> um, so if you want to check out our full playthrough, uh, we kind of walked through the rules a little bit, um, explaining what's happening, but um, there is a perfect rules video that you can watch as well for, for the full rules. Uh, but we had a great time, and um, I was excited to show that off for Michael and his Kickstarter, which is going on now. And uh, yeah, I think it's like a a thousand dollars from funding so it's getting there we still have several days i think a couple of weeks anyway left on the kickstarter so that's good that's good to know um sweet sweet yeah michael put the link in for the warehouse 13 kickstarter and uh check out warehouse 13 the board game on bgg link very cool very cool um so I also played a solo game of Mayscape, the Mayscape Labyrinthos and Mayscape Ariadne. <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying that right, but um, the Mayscape games that just came out from Devere Games. So cool if you're into like MC Escher type things or Monument Valley uh, app, the, the, the phone app. Um, I played all of the Monument Valley. I wanted more of it. And if there's been a, a sequel to that, I definitely need to go look for it because I always enjoyed that Monument Valley game. But this is very similar where you're going through this maze, trying to collect the different things, um, and then you're flipping the pages back and forth and trying to make sure you see all, <laughs> get all of the items and everything. Um, okay. I thought you were, I thought you were busy. These are the Mayscape games. Um, so it's a solo game where you're kind of puzzling it out. And Dan said he played it one, one day, one morning, and he did the first puzzle in like five minutes. So I was like, okay, I didn't time it when I did it on the stream, but I guess it's all on the stream. So I could go back and calculate that time if I really wanted to, but I don't, I don't know. I just like trying to do it and having a fun time doing it. I don't necessarily need to time myself doing it. Um, yes, Michael says his Kickstarter is currently at $33,896, so $1,104 from being funded. Very close. It's very close. So that will happen. I'm, my guess will happen this weekend, if not early next week, if at the, at the rate it's kind of going. So, yeah. But... Who knows? There might be a big push. You never know. Never know what's going to happen. Um, so it's exciting. <laughs> uh, I talked about a new game called Let's Make a Bus Route, the dice game. Michael and I played several games of this, and then we played it on the stream. And I ended up teaching Dan while he was here. So um, I, I really like this game. I think it's really fun. Um, after, I think, three or four plays... I'm still enjoying it. I definitely want to play the Mars or the space alternate gameplay next time I play just to see how, how it's differ, how it's different. And, um, yeah, I think 
that could be cool to have warp zones like going from one space one section of the board to the other um so that's like <laughs> that's an interesting um way to think about it uh so for now i i've been enjoying it i like the dice drafting i like it's not dice drafting i like the dice that's kind of dice drafting. it's like dice selection and root placement um yeah i think it's i think it's a cool little game i believe it's on the bgg store um or it will be it will be on the bgg store it's not there yet it's it's getting imported uh so check it out when it gets there you'll really like it if you play two player games you have to play two player games though it's good um, I played a game of Magnificent Snow. <laughs> I love, love, love Magnificent. I think this is a fantastic game. I really enjoy the expansion. Um, I like the extra polyomino tile. It's like a cross. And, um, and there's new cards that uses that piece specifically. Uh, there's this other mechanic where you can add a fifth turn action, which I think is okay. There was a comment on my blog that they didn't really like it as much, and I can see that. You don't really need to use that anyway, but um, I really enjoy the new pieces for Magnificent. It makes it super challenging. Those pieces are really hard to use on your board properly, um, but I, I really enjoy... I really enjoy this game. I'm always willing to play this game. It never gets played enough. So, <laughs> so it's just one, it's one of those things like, oh my God, will you play with me? Yes, okay, let's play. <laughs> hey, Bryant, thanks for submitting some channel points to the monthly challenge, train themed games. We're almost there with that, by the way. I think it's like, hmm, I think it was like, 86% there when I checked last. So that was a big push towards it, I'm sure. Um, so if you're interested in seeing some train games, um, I don't know what we're going to be playing. That is something I'll have to figure out. Um, we'll figure it out. <laughs> I just thought it was, it was, it was a fun theme to try and trick people into thinking I'll play an 18xx game. But I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna play an 18 or anything. Cube rails? I don't think I have cube rails. <laughs> Doctor Science contributed fourteen thousand. Wow. To the monthly challenge. Nicely done. Nicely done. Thanks, Doctor Sign. <laughs> um. So yeah, magnificent it is fantastic. I love the expansion. I love the base game. I love everything about it. Totally my type of game. Dice drafting. Action select, you know, do your action with the dice kind of thing. I love it. I love it. There's so much to love and planning and all the things. And yeah, that that's a, that's a game that totally made for me, I guess. <laughs> um, we also played a game called Mining Colony. I remember we did an unboxing video <laughs> on... The Steph's Hodgepodge a few weeks ago whenever I got the game. And everybody's like, show what's inside. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and we looked inside and then finally got to play it. Really enjoyed it. We played it two player. But then when Dan was here, we played on the stream with three players. And I have to say, I much prefer it with more players. Because there's groupings that you're going to be drafting. You're trying to bid for these groups. And it's so important with more players to get what you want. And then you just don't know what numbers are going to, they're going to flip up. So you kind of have to be aggressive with your bidding. And I really, really like that. So I had a great time playing that on stream. Uh, so if you missed out on seeing that, you can um, check it out. I have it all on YouTube, all the videos that we've done um, the past week. So I had a great time. Really, really like that. It's a very quick filler tile placement with some blind bidding. So I like that. <laughs> um, Steph. Uh, prepaid labels. Um, I don't know. 
I don't know. I assume prepaid labels you just printed on PayPal as a prepaid label. Um, but I'm not quite sure. Um, so then uh, Michael and I also played a, the next installment of Sleeping Gods. We played that on stream, of course, and it was kind of rough getting back into it because it had been a month and there's just so much to like know and remember about fighting and about exploring and what, what to do and which way to go. But once we got into it, it, it was making sense. We managed to get through the deck the first time through. It, the game totally ends after three times through the, the deck. So we went through the first... <laughs> so right now we, we're, we've, we've streamed twice and made it through the first, the first deck out of three decks. So maybe it will take four more sessions before we complete this game. I don't know what's in store for us there. Um... Aldi even joined. That was super special. He's like, I, I told him before, I told him before we were streaming, like, we're streaming Sleeping Gods if you're around. You can, like, you can come help us. And then he showed up, and at one point he even called me. He's like, let me help you. I'm like, thank you, we need help. So he's, he's definitely more familiar with the mechanics because he's played a lot of it at this point. So um, that was really cool. That was really cool to have him join us like that. Um, I like the game. I think, I think it's pretty good. It can be frustrating at times though. So if you're not serious about getting into it and you just kind of want to play a game, that's probably not the game for you. Cause you really have to delve deep with sleeping gods. So yeah. Uh, you, you just don't, you probably don't want to like go lightly into it. You're going to want to like get into it. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, it will be really cool for a lot of people, that's for sure. Um, with James and Susan, I was able to get through the desert to the table. Fantastic at three players. I think I've only played it at five players. Um, it's a game that I just always enjoyed. Um, for, for an area control game, I don't know why I enjoy it so much, but it's, Really well done. It's simple. You're just placing camels, trying to get big connections of groups and trying to enclose different locations on the board. Um, and so anytime I can get this game played, I will try and get the game played. Um, uh, yeah, so I, I, I really love Through the Desert. It's, it's definitely a classic at this point. Uh, those little candy camels, so cute. Love them. <laughs> uh Oh, Meryl says it needs commitment. Yeah, Sleeping Gods definitely needs a commitment. And you're not very good with that, uh, with the games. Well, yeah, so it probably won't be for you. And that's fine. It won't be for everybody. Um, I don't think... So for me, Sleeping Gods is, is good. It's just nowhere near Seventh Continent level of good. Like, I love Seventh Continent. Um, there are some rough edges with Seventh Continent, obviously. But you can play a... I don't know, nicer way where, like, if you actually die, you don't really die. You just keep going just to see how it unfolds. But, um, yeah, it, it, it's rough. If you were to die in, in Seventh Continent, there's no going back. You're literally starting over. So it's, it's a harsh game. <laughs> I think I cried and I was, like, miserable for three days after we died. I was like, I hate the world. I just, everything sucks. It was just, oh, I got so emotional with that game. Just highs and lows in Seventh Continent. I mean, no no other game has given me such a roller coaster of emotions ever. So it's just, I don't know. I rate it very highly just because of that. Like, geez. <laughs> um, so as far as exploration game goes, I much prefer Seventh Continent, but I see what Sleeping Gods has to offer, and I like the way it's going. Oh, uh -huh. uh, it's fine, because there's such joy if you do it, and you get, I mean, so, I don't know, there, there's, there's this, like, really interesting pull in Seventh Continent that I've never gotten in another game. So, I rated it a 10 out of 10. 
It's really great. It's really... If you like exploration things, that's probably the best. Um, <laughs> love. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh my goodness. So yeah, I, I like the big, big exploration games in general. I think that's like a really cool, cool mechanic. I, I enjoy that quite a bit. Yeah. Um, so there's a, and then we come to our Friday blog and I wrote about exchange. It's a light stock manipulation game though. So I, I actually didn't mind it at all when we played it. I thought it was for, for the, the, the depth of the game, the randomness didn't bother me so much. Uh, but it did bother everybody else at the table. They were not enjoying it. Um, so what happens is you're trying to buy low, sell high, right? You're trying to buy low, sell high. And you have to kind of lock in what you're going to do before you see how the market's manipulated. So people are basically going to try and, you know, ruin your plans. And that will happen. So you just have to take it, like, lighthearted, uh, I, I didn't mind it. I like buy, buy low, sell high games in general. I think it's an interesting, it's an interesting mechanic and I, I generally am pretty good at it. I like trying to see if I can make it work. Um, and you know, I, I think, I think that's a fun, that's a fun mechanic in general. So I, I had, I had, I probably had the best time at anybody at the table. <laughs> Uh, then we also played Munchkin Disney. Oh boy. <laughs> I saw DeFu playing it on the stream the other day and I'm like, why are they playing Munchkin Disney? <laughs> I'm pretty sure everybody in the chat was like, why are you playing Munchkin Disney? <laughs> um, so I played it. This was the first Munchkin game I've ever played. Um, I can probably safely say I don't need to play another Munchkin game <laughs> ever again. If there was ever a Munchkin game to play, it would be Disney. Just because I, I love the Disney themes in general. Like, I love all the movies and yeah, that's great. So, there were some, there were some good moments, but there was just some, like, it was just long. The whole game was just long for what it was. I'm like, is this game over? I'm kind of done with the take that and all that stuff. So there, there were definitely some interesting and funny moments in the game, but in general, it was just, it was just too long um, for me. So and and a bit too much take that. I'm like, ah, I liked what I had. You just took it away. That's rude. How rude. <laughs> um, Michael and I also played a very quick filler game called. Pass the pot, which we then played on stream when Dan was here as a three-player game. And that's a game. <laughs> that's a game. Um. <laughs> Dunchkin. <laughs> yep, I was Dunchkies. <laughs> Pass the pot. <laughs> uh, so, pass the pot. Simple, push your luck type game. Kind of reminds me of left, right, center. And um, it, there, there is more strategy involved. You actually can choose to roll the die, pay to roll the die one more time, and hopefully get what you want. But it is fairly luck dependent on what you roll. And if you just keep rolling the best thing over and over again, Michael, then you will win all the games. I don't know. I think Michael somehow like rigs the dice. He's really good at rolling what he needs. So he has won every game of Pass the Pot that we've played. <laughs> right, left, center with more rules. That's right. <laughs> um, and finally, we played a game called Kingsport Festival, the card game. All right. Kingsport Festival, the card game is really a dice game with cards but it's also a card game with dice. Kingsport Festival, the card dice game. <laughs> uh, it is by far 
way, 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 way better than King's Port Festival. There's no way in a million years that I would ever suggest anybody playing King's Port Festival, the board game. Um, it was horrible to the extreme. It was really, really bad. The card game, however, totally different mechanics. It worked pretty well, actually. So, hey. Um, I didn't mind it at all. You're rolling the dice. And you're collecting these cards that you that the cards you, you, you collect will have powers on them that you can play every turn. Um, and that might give you more dice to collect more cards. It might give you re-roll abilities. It might give you all these different things. And you're just trying to collect the little, like symbols in the corner or whatever uh to get the most points at the end of the game but you're gonna have to take on the investigators at some at different parts of the game so you have to make sure you can fight against them and stuff um or you'll lose your sanity all that jazz you know (laughs) as you do (laughs) so it worked pretty well as a game and you know i would play it again i i would don't think i would request it i think it was also a bit long for what it was because it's not a game that everybody's going at the same time like somebody goes and then the next player goes and then I, and so you're just sitting there watching them roll dice and you know it's it it can be long to figure out all of your options with all the cards and figuring out how you can manipulate them to get the symbols you want and And, yeah, you just don't know until it's your turn on what's available and all that jazz. So, seemed to be fine. (laughs) Um, And that's about it. That's about it. Dan was here. Uh, We got to learn a whole bunch of awesome new games, which I will talk about next week. But I'm excited to share, you know, Terraforming Mars, the Ares Expedition with everybody on stream at some point. And Imperium Legends, which was fantastic um on stream trying to see what else is on the couch we played flourish great little drafting game die of the dead uh all these all these cool games that i've had um canvas 100 tory grease lightning so all those games are over there you know hopefully show them off at some point Uh, i know a lot of them i want to show off so uh, I'm excited to do that. And, um, yeah, we, we got through so many games and so many not great games at that. But don't worry, I'll review them all in uh, this week's, next week's Friday blog. I will have a new to me blog post and that will have all the games that I learned and my rundown of what I rate them. A couple of quick sentences. And, uh, yeah. That will be everybody's favorite blog is the new to me blog where I write about everything and (laughs) all the games that I played. Um, I think that's about, I just plowed through all the games this week that it's to talk about. I just have a lot to do today. I got, I mean, so now with the 67 games that I played with Dan, I have to go figure out how to write about everything. Okay. I am free ish. Michael's free-ish. Free-ish. <laughs> I don't know whatever that means. Free-ish. Free. I'm free. Dun, 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 dun. I'm free. That is a lot, of write, uh, a lot to write about. So it'll be broken up into several different blocks. On the plus side, I spent a good portion of last night work uh editing all the pictures it was ended up being about 200 pictures that i i edited and uh my calendar is done i will get that printed so i can start my kickstarter Derek, i'm gonna try and get that all written up this weekend um and it it'll probably look very similar to last year's kickstarter and we'll just kind (laughs) of Copyright all that. Copy, yeah. Two words, copy and write. (laughs) So that Kickstarter hopefully will happen sometime in July, end of July. 
and uh, I can deliver to multiple cons. So I'm excited to get my calendar out there um, and it's going to be good. It's going to be really good. I'm excited. It looks amazing. I am. I'm really excited. I'm really excited. And I'll be probably doing, I could probably do a spoiler. Let's see. Let's see if I can do a spoiler. I got some spoiler pages, maybe. Overlay. Let's see. Let's see if I can do it. I think so. Ooh. I'll do, I'll do March. This is my birthday month. I, I always kind of put pictures that I really love um, on my birthday. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> so that's like one page. We got Sleeping Gods. We got Jekyll versus Hyde. We got Museum. I love those colors. I think it's like really a nice page um so that looks pretty good what else do we got i got oh this is june this is gonna be june we got all the fun things we got mini golf and ventures and amusement parks she says those like a fun hype, 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 epic. <laughs> That's like just fun. I just like all, of, you know, June. You're having fun in June. It's summer. Let's see. Oh, I really liked my September. The colors just look amazing in September. So let's show that one. Step look. So colorful. I think they the colors just work really well. The oranges, the blues, I think it's really it pops. In my opinion, I really like this page. It's so colorful. I know. <laughs> I, I, the more color, the better in my opinion. <laughs> um, let's see what else do I got. Um, the, so this is the first time that I'm doing like a pretty bright October. Normally October is kind of like doom and gloom and like monsters and everything. Um, but this time I took all of that, but chose pictures with lots of color. Oh, let me, let me do October since I'm talking about it and then I'll show the cover. So I, I chose like bright games. It's like I'm I'm really happy with with the the way that this has turned out. Um, so I'm very excited for this calendar. Um, so really bright October. It's different than normal. I have let's see. This is the cover. I'm choosing this as my cover. got mandala stones or mandala stones and I never I never know if I'm saying it right or wrong but I love the look like, it's colorful draws you in cool pieces <laughs> doom and gloom <laughs> that's some happy looking doom and gloom <laughs> yeah it is <laughs> normally it's darker and Maybe black and white photos mixed in there. But I didn't really do that for October this time around. But calendar. Um, yep, I sell a calendar every year. Thank you, Michael, for the command. It is still available. Um, and, um, yeah. So, I'm really excited for this calendar. I think it's, there's a lot of great images that I, I 
I came together. I wasn't sure because normally I wait till like October to do my calendar. This is much earlier in the year than normal um, that, that I'm used to. So I'm missing out on like August, September photos that I would normally have. But I had enough catalog in my photos from the past year to, to get in a full calendar. I always have like a million photos to choose from, but, uh, you know, making it look good is half the battle, right? You want to make it look good. Um, so where is my calendar? It's here somewhere. So this is this year's. I, I, I understand Meryl. No, no worries. No worries. So I, I like to do the, the, the photo down the side too as well. So, and, um, so that, that is all included on this year's calendar as well. Yeah. I mean, shipping overseas and the shipping cost itself is just as much as the calendar. It's just like, man, I don't. I wish that shipping a calendar wasn't like 17 bucks or 15 bucks. It's just, it's so expensive and I feel bad charging that for shipping, but that's what it, that's what it costs me to ship it. So I have to charge what it costs, unfortunately. Um, wow. And shipping indeed. Yeah. I didn't really know about the import tax as well, so that... Man, that just is, it's brutal. It's brutal. It would be, it'd be great if I, you know, if I was going to Essen and, you know, I can meet up or even ship from, like, Europe. <laughs> uh, I wish I was going to, I, I sold a bunch of calendars when I went to Essen, you know, a few years ago, or three years ago or whatever. I sold a bunch. It's just... Yeah, shipping them overseas is, is quite a challenge. They're changing this law per July 1. Meaning they're changing it for the better or changing it to what you just said? It was not duties... For under 22 euros, now there is no limit anymore just on everything. Oh my god. That's horrible! That's terrible. Jeez. Well, changing for the worse. I can, I can tell it's changing for the worse in everything. Wow. Well, that is just too bad. Hopefully they will change it back. But I don't know. That just seems... That is sad. That is very sad. It's like, it's cheaper for me to like fly there. <laughs> Hand it to you. <laughs> Time to take a trip. They're all meanies. Dang it. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm excited. I love my 2021 calendar. I love my 2020 calendar. So we'll get that going out. We'll get that going on for Kickstarter in the coming weeks. And uh, it's going to be awesome. Everything is awesome. <laughs> oh, you would pay money for some nice computer backgrounds. Okay, that's something to think about. That's something to think about. Do you, now for computer backgrounds, do you prefer collages like that? It's an interesting idea. I haven't thought about it that much, but um, I would pooter backgrounds. <laughs> um, or do you just like solo images? I know Michael uses my photos as computer backgrounds. My computer background is from my trip to Alaska. <laughs> I took some nice photos. Yes. Okay. <laughs> that is something to consider during my process, the, my thought process. <laughs> um, okay. 
Good, good, good talk. Good talk. Mostly solo images. Yeah, I can get kind of busy with multiple images. Collages are sort of my thing. <laughs> it's because I, I started doing collages be, mostly because I can't decide on just one. <laughs> I just, I have so many pictures. There's no way that I could just decide on one image per calendar page. Like, to me, that's incredibly boring. I like to have a lot of stuff going on, seeing all the different games and everything. So, you know, but that preference I suppose but I try and make it look good so everybody also enjoys it <laughs> oh yeah for sure I hear you <laughs> so yeah that was, ba that was basically everything I had today guys I um I will have a, a bunch next week Michael and I will do our top 10 that's always exciting and fun and um who knows maybe we'll I have to talk to him. Maybe we'll do a giveaway at some point in the the next week or so. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I think that's about it. I'll do one more shout out for Michael's uh, Kickstarter, which is now all nearly funded. Warehouse thirteen expansion, HG Wells expansion. My pewter backgrounds are images of the Thundergriff. Play mats from the Matchbox collection and some images from the Katia calendar. Oh. I don't know what Katia calendar is. <laughs> oh, so they cycle through. That's cool. That's cool. Thundergriff play mats. They must be really nice play mats to be a computer background. <laughs> and, um,. All right, I think that's about it. I don't really have a show until today. I think one game, two games came in, and I'll show them in a couple weeks when I have a whole bunch more to show. So, all right, I will be right back. That will be the conclusion of today's hodgepodge, and I will be right back.